background. Uh, so the first few minutes, maybe uh, each of you can, uh, I, I have seen your names uh, on the screen, but I would like to know uh, which college and also uh, which uh, branch and uh, which semester you're studying. So in the chat window, uh, you can type in uh, your college name. If your college name is like uh, Adi Shankara College of Engineering and Technology, you can just type in Adi Shankara, then your uh, branch CSE, and then your uh, semester so that I can understand uh, your background, your profile. Uh, I think I've got the first uh, one. Okay. Okay, Mecca. Anandan Narayanan, is it the same Anandan Narayanan working in INAP? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So we have Anandan Narayanan working as an intern in INAP. Uh, he's from SCT. Vimal Jyoti is in Kannur, right? Kiran? Okay. You can type in your college name, your semester and your branch. Okay, so I think uh, most of the people are in the final semester and from different uh, backgrounds. I can see computer science, I can see electronics, I can see electrical. Okay, so uh, what I will do is I will share my screen and start up the presentation. Can you see my screen? Can somebody confirm whether you can see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Right. So, advanced uh, job opportunities in IT sector for BTEC students, that is my topic. So, this is not about uh, uh, you know the usual job opportunities that are there. But uh, what are the more advanced level job opportunities in the IT sector? Uh, when it comes to uh, IT, we know that uh, past uh, 20 years has been very bright for information technology and uh, the sector has been generating uh, jobs by the million, uh, not only in uh, India, but throughout the world. If you see our state Kerala and see which is the major enterprise uh, that is generating jobs? It is IT, right? With Technopark, Infopark, and other uh, you know parks, IT parks set up by the government, and other private parks also. A lot of uh, work happening, a lot of job opportunities when it comes to information technology. That means uh, you know companies that are most of the clients for these IT companies are outside India. For example, in our case, 95% uh, of our clients are in the US. And uh, what we see is that every uh, company uh, will require IT systems, whether it is small business or uh, medium business or large business. And uh, they tend to outsource uh, the design, the development, and the maintenance of these IT systems to uh, people outside because that is much uh, 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 much lower cost involved when they outsource it to countries like India and the expertise level is also high. So going forward, uh, when it comes to uh, your graduation time and also the years after that, 
we can be sure and guaranteed that the number of IT jobs will keep on increasing. We don't know about other uh, jobs because of the COVID situation. Uh, what is going to be the future of other jobs, whether it will increase or whether it will uh, decrease, we don't know. But for IT jobs, we can rest assured, we can uh, be sure that the number of IT jobs will keep on increasing uh, year on year. And uh, we know that uh, COVID, even through COVID, uh, we, uh, IT people can work from home. So there is no hit when it comes to uh, working. Right. Advanced jobs for pressure. So I have listed down eight of them. Uh, go through uh, each one of them in uh, taking a couple of slides, keep, taking a couple of minutes for each of them. Uh, like I mentioned initially, these are not... Uh, uh, the usual jobs that freshers get uh, when they get recruited into a company. Usually when you see your campus recruitments, uh, companies come on day zero, day one, you know, day two, day three, and uh, they uh, conduct aptitude tests. And uh, when it comes for joining, they will have, the companies will have uh, a training uh, program. And uh, it's the usual uh, training program where they might uh, teach you a programming language and then absorb you into uh, some project that they have. But what I've listed here is uh, or are jobs that are a bit more advanced. And in my experience uh, working in Mar Celius as a professor in uh, computer science department, IT department, and also as a placement officer, what I've seen that uh, if you take a set of 60 students in the class, there'll be around uh, five to 10 students who will have advanced skills and who are eligible and who get recruited into much more advanced jobs in companies. Even if they are recruited in uh, bigger companies uh, uh, like an Infos or TCS, the level of skills that they have will make them eligible for a much more uh, higher level of job in, and they usually tend to go into a different track. For a company like uh, InApp, we also have these kind of tracks for advanced uh, uh, jobs, uh, tracks for people uh, who have advanced level of skills and they get uh, into projects and into different roles much more early than other people who need to be trained, right? So what I've listed here is not a compre comprehensive uh, set of uh, jobs, but only eight of them. Uh, and the first one itself, uh, full stack developer, <coughs> that is the maximum number of uh, vacancies. As you go down in the list, with the data science, machine learning, DevOps, UI, SDT, CRM, and digital marketing, the number of vacancies keep on uh, decreasing. The number of job opportunities keep on decreasing. If the, for example, a full stack developer, you have 100 opportunities. Uh, uh, the number of data science opportunities will be somewhere around 10, machine learning around 10, DevOps around five, UI around five, SDT around eight, CRM and digital marketing around five. So now you understand that uh, the number of jobs also, number of vacancies also matter when you are thinking about how do I get an advanced job as a fresher, uh, as somebody is studying in a state, how do I get an advanced job? Obviously, full stack developer is the first choice because uh, that is, uh, you know, the number of vacancies, number of openings are much more higher than other uh, jobs that I have listed here. Now, what is a full stack developer? Now, uh, we have uh, heard about uh, backend development. We have heard about front-end development. Full-stack developer is somebody who can do uh, both. You know, what is uh, backend development is the server side. You know, uh, uh, I will explain a little bit. All Most of the applications now uh, run on uh, web servers. And the server, uh, again, supplies the request. You know, so whenever the request from the client comes, the server supplies whatever is asked for to the client and the client renders that on the web browser usually. So uh, somebody who works on the client side, that is the front end side, is called a front end developer and somebody who works on the back end, which is the server side is called the uh, back end developer. Now full stack developer is somebody who has skills across these technology stacks, whether it's the back end, he can work on back end technologies, where it is front-end, he can work on front-end technologies. So the picture here, uh, you know, it's a very common picture used to illustrate uh, what is a full-stack developer. You can, you can see at the bottom of the 
uh, what do you call the burger with the uh, hosting you know whether it is uh, hosted on the cloud or aws linux azure windows now on top of that is the server technologies which is python php c sharp perl node and then uh, the database uh, comes uh, then the apis apis is the interfaces through which the front end uh, interfaces with the back end uh, it could be soap it could be rust it could be web sockets so uh, somebody uh, who has the skills to work on the entire stack you know somebody who knows about databases design of databases somebody who knows about uh, how to host the application on a, a aws or a, on a linux somebody who can uh, uh, work on the back end uh, maybe python maybe java and uh, he can also do some angular work he can also do some mobile work ui work you know, that is somebody who is a full stack developer <coughs> it is very rare uh, to find uh, full stack people uh, right out of college because when you do your main projects uh, you will divide your main projects into you know uh, this person will do back end this person will do front end and uh, one person will do the ui part so it gets divided and uh, uh, i have seen several uh, in my uh, when i was working in college you know several students who have uh, alternated between back end and front end so that they develop you know both these skills so that they become full stack because they are knowledgeable that full stack developers are very valuable in industry so uh, many project they will work on maybe a front end main project they will be working on back end so that uh, they will have experience across uh the full technology stack once they graduate out of college so this is a strategy you can also take if you are working on a project you now alternate uh, between the different technologies so that you develop expertise in all the uh, sections in an application the most <coughs> common uh, what do you call stacks uh, are the javascript uh, stacks if i would recommend uh, any of you to be Uh, a full stack if you are aspiring to be a full stack developer I'll i will in, i can recommend that you should go for java script uh, stacks because that is in high demand in the industry which is the mean mern and uh, mevn stacks the mean uh, stands for you know mongodb which is uh, the database uh, uh, then uh, e uh, a and n uh, one for node uh, node js uh, then a for angular and the, then e for uh, the express uh, js which is a framework which runs the node js in the background likewise mern is for the same thing mongodb uh, express uh, node but only change in front end is the react uh, which comes in front end mevn is for view js uh, mongodb uh, then express js uh, node js and then view js this is the full stack uh, uh, for javascript likewise python stacks are there where you can work on django and flask but there also javascript knowledge is needed because you know need to know one of the uh, front end frameworks which is either angular or react or vue if you need to be a full stack developer likewise there are java dotnet and php stacks in inapp we have all this we have uh, java stack full stack developers dotnet full stack de developers php uh, mern uh, mean mevn django flask everything and more importantly uh, where the industry is going to is more of a cloud uh, hosting therefore uh, what is uh, coming into uh, what you call more demand is the serverless full stack people i'm not sure whether in college i haven't seen too many students working on uh, aws <coughs> but that is a future where in the industry Uh, most of the applications get hosted on the cloud whether it is azure whether it is google whether it is aws aws of course is the industry leader and therefore in uh, in most of the companies including in app we go for aws as a hosting uh, service and in aws we have a lot of services that is available for us to build a application full stack so uh, i would encourage you to take uh, uh, aws if you are aspiring to be a full stack developer to take an aws account uh, which is uh, you know free account is there and you can explore the different options that are available i'll show you one of the pictures that are there aws serverless full stack if you see the picture you can see the web browser which is a client and you can see on the right hand end which is the dynamic db which is the database and the back end is uh, run instead of uh, no php uh, or java or anything we have the aws lambda which could be run using 
any of these languages. Usually we tend to go for Python scripting in AWS Lambda, then the APIs are there, Cognito for the authentication and Amplify, AWS Amplify to create the front end, you know, where you use uh, either JavaScript, mainly JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript inside the AWS Amplify framework <coughs> to create the front end. So this provides a whole ecosystem to create a full application. Everything is there in AWS. You just need to uh, make it work. And this is where the industry is going uh, towards uh, serverless, towards cloud, uh, towards a full stack on cloud, right? So uh, that is about full stack. Uh, let me move uh, to the next uh, one. If you have uh, questions, maybe I can pause for uh, one minute at this point. Okay, I'll move on to the uh, next slide, which is the data science uh, section, data science uh, developers or people who want to go into data science. As I mentioned, if there are 100 opportunities in full stack uh, development, uh, for full stack developers, uh, you know, when it comes to pressure hiring, data science, the numbers will come down to one by 10. The reason is uh, it is sometimes difficult to get into uh, data science because of the amount of uh, uh, knowledge and skills that you need to acquire. What is uh, data science? <coughs> or what do the data scientists do? Collect, clean, analyze, and visualize massive amounts of data, which is a big data, to meet business needs. I can tell you the last part is the most important part, uh, to meet business needs, because whatever you do, whether it is collecting, cleaning, analyzing, and visualizing uh, the data, Finally, if it uh, meets the business need, then it is useful. Otherwise, uh, whatever work that you do, it is not useful. So that is where a lot of skills uh, are involved, including business analyst skills are needed when it comes to data science. Skills needed, I have listed some of them. Machine learning, data visualization, statistics, and high-level math. The reason is machine learning, there are uh, so many ready-made algorithms, but you will need knowledge in statistics and high-level math to understand these algorithms. And if you need to tweak some algorithms and make your own, you definitely need high level math. SQL, SQL, you need to uh, you know, understand how to write SQL queries and uh, you need to understand NoSQL data stores also like MongoDB, uh, like uh, Apache, CouchDB, Cassandra. Uh, Python, uh, the usage of uh, NumPy and Pandas is absolutely es essential when it comes to data science. Business and non-technical skills are also needed. Now, the different roles that are there in the industry are uh, for data science, a data scientist, data uh, or ML, data and ML engineers, and data analysts. These three are different roles. For freshers, usually, it is a data or ML engineer that applies. The other two uh, freshers from BTEC. No, data scientist is a much more advanced role. Usually, if you see the profile of a data scientist, uh, they will usually be either a master's or a PhD. Uh, or somebody who has gone through uh, the data or ML engineer uh, work for several years, he gets to become a data scientist. Data analyst was also there. Uh, they can come from MBA. They can come from uh, other backgrounds also. So a little bit about, uh, you know, what does data science mean? I'll explain using uh, a diagram. Now, if you see, uh, there's like an inverted triangle on top of that, uh, if you see the marking, it is raw data that comes in from uh, some application. Maybe it is an e-commerce application. What, trying to explain what is the data science and where does uh, data scientist, you know, data engineer, ML engineer, and also data analyst comes in. The raw data, the size could be in terabytes, in petabytes. That is huge amounts of data. And the first section is actually about uh, cleaning this data and also uh, you know, analyzing this data. So the size of the data becomes uh, smaller. <clears throat> that is where the role of the data engineer and uh, mainly the data analyst comes. Now, after the first uh, section, which is almost 60% uh, of the effort, uh, the data gets reduced to MB to GB, uh, gigabyte, megabyte to gigabit size, gigabyte size. 
after which the ml engineer and uh, the data engineer software engineer comes into picture and they start working and they uh, you know design a model they deploy monitor and finally whatever what comes out of this inverted triangle are insights which is useful for business you know it is like filtering 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 and finally you get some insights maybe to make some decisions uh, to set some strategy that is where uh, it comes and uh, it meets the uh, needs of the business you know it starts from a uh, huge amount of data finally it comes down filtered down to small insights which is useful for the business so uh, the data scientist his role is from top to bottom no end to end now the data scientist needs to know uh, right from the raw data analyze the raw data he needs to interact with the data analyst uh, uh, to understand the business uh, from which the data comes he needs to analyze and how to clean the data you no know, data is uh, never do you see clean data data has to be cleaned so that it can be uh, put into the model so uh, at the model stage comes the ml engineer and also a little bit of the data engineer and the ml engineer and the data engineers are the ones who write the code ml engineer also designs the model in uh, you know in consultation with the data scientist and finally uh, to display the data as a dashboard the insights as a dashboard you need the data analyst they usually uh, use business intelligence tools to display the data you know sometimes uh, companies like us use open source technologies like uh, you know d3js or you know uh, graph uh, we can use neo4j graph also we sometimes use now other uh, javascript technologies can be used to display tableau is another tool that is used to display uh, uh, the final insights so you know this is uh, you know end to end the data scientist takes care of is like a you know uh, the one in charge of this project and the ml engineer the data engineer and also data analyst are parts of this uh, process or this pipeline now data science job market trend analysis i'm not sure whether you can see the whole thing but uh, uh, the leftmost uh, uh, one the circle uh, you can see location wise the data scientist jobs is bangalore which is uh, leading almost uh, 40% the rest uh, of the pie it is small small mumbai hyderabad pune gurgaon chennai noida delhi uh, kochi the small 1.4% so if you are aspiring for data engineer ml engineer jobs bangalore is a place that you need to go to and finally uh, on the right hand uh, bottom corner data scientist jobs based on experience uh, you will see the minimum uh, experience required for a data scientist is at least 2 years that is where i said uh, for freshers it will be either data engineer or ml engineer uh, jobs that are available so these are the four uh, job section job roles that i have listed here what do you need to do to enter into this uh, industry uh, into this particular role and how to get an opening of course data analyst uh, programming tools uh, and data visualization are the two skills you don't need to be an engineering graduate uh, because uh, coding is not required uh, you can uh, you know study and take certifications in certain uh, visualization uh, tools like power bi or tableau or learn to use some of the javascript uh, uh, you know visualization libraries to get into a data analyst role but when it comes to the data engineer role he is more of a programmer and he will work the model and get it uh, get the output that the model uh, intends therefore he will need to be an expert in programming uh, data wrangling and software engineering then on top of that much more higher is the machine learning engineer programming tools then data side statistics machine learning uh, concepts you need to know little bit of software engineering then calculus and linear algebra these are all required for machine, good machine learning engineers otherwise uh, you know machine learning can be done using all the available libraries that are there but uh, that will not uh, make you a good machine learning engineer uh, you need to go into depth uh, understand with the depth of understanding of uh, mathematics also and statistics also if you need to be a good machine learning engineer at the right end is the data scientist as i mentioned he will be a, usually a senior profile with skills in most of these areas you know programming tools data visualization data intuition usually data engineer or a machine learning engineer after several years uh, tend to go into a data scientist uh, role right 
before i go into the next uh, job uh, any questions i can't see the chat uh, sorry i think oh, okay right i can see the chat okay right i'll move on to the next one devops devops is another uh, area which has uh, uh, a good number of uh, job openings for freshers it's an agile development practice it's a kind of culture where you know the development uh, you go from end to end using automated uh, tools uh, that is uh, you know a lot of opportunities are opening up in this particular area uh, ci cd or continuous integration continuous uh, uh, deployment is a devops tactic which makes use of the right automated tools to implement agile development i'll show you one picture to explain uh, what it means by uh, devops now uh, what is there in the middle you can see uh, the left side is the dev and the right side is the ops or the operations part we'll start with the coding right any uh, project that you uh, do any application that you uh, you start with the coding then with the build then with the testing of the application then with the release then the deployment of the application on servers then operating that on the servers then monitoring uh, that particular application on how it is running how uh, is it taking load how is it performance and all then again feedback for that uh, from that goes into planning and maybe any code changes that are required then building testing release it goes in a cyclical manner so uh, enterprise applications uh, are now uh, running on uh, you know they use uh, devops in that they use a lot of tools to automate this process now earlier it used to be that people need to get involved you know, after coding they need to uh, manually build something they need to give to the tester and manually test something releases manual you now all this is uh, this can be automated as a pipeline now after coding building is done automatically after building there are automated scripts to uh, test the full code it is run then release is uh, done after that it all happens uh, automatically the whole cycle is taken care of automatically so there are a lot of tools that are uh, used in this particular cycle for for example for a deployment docker is one and it has become so popular that it has been generating a lot of uh, jobs uh, operating you can see kubernetes uh, ansible and chef kubernetes uh, is ansible kubernetes and ansible are the most popular ones and other uh, sections you can see uh, you know testing you can see uh, different uh, tools then uh, releasing and planning jit you can use gradle you can use and a lot of tools are there uh, in devops also now global devops opportunities role wise if you see entry level that is where you know 46% of uh, the jobs in uh, devops are that is a good number of uh, jobs around 1 lakh open demands for devops uh, list as primary skill this is throughout the world now 10% of the jobs are listed from india now it has seen such a steady increase that uh, you know entry level if you can uh, if you want to get into an advanced job if you can specialize in some of these uh, technologies and try out some of these technologies you will be able to get into a much more advanced uh, job the job the job demand uh, distribution based on devops tools in india you can see the last uh, section uh, which is uh, docker kubernetes vagrant you now even if you uh, study or take certifications in docker and kubernetes i think uh, that itself will give you a good advantage over others as you enter into the industry and if you want to get into this particular field there's a huge demand for skilled engineers in docker demand for kubernetes is also you know it is expected to rise this is something in 2020 but it is risen and kubernetes is used very uh, uh, frequently in the industry in most uh, projects now ansible and chef leads the pack in uh, what do you call uh, infrastructure as code iac and terraform is something that is uh, uh, coming up and we in in app we use uh, most of these uh, technologies for our devops uh, practice you know, most of our projects use devops for continuous integration continuous uh, deployment and kubernetes is used docker is used terraform is used for uh, you know infra increasing and decreasing the infrastructure on the cloud Uh, using code by writing code. 
any questions in this before i move on to the next job i'm not uh, sure if uh, whatever i am saying is going completely over your head uh, or is it something useful for you any questions okay i'll move on to uh, the next slide okay uh, user interface design that is where uh, uh, user interface uh, design uh, ui uh, development uh, that is uh, uh, another area which has uh, a lot of job opportunities uh, anand narayanan who has joined uh, uh, this session he is working he is from sct uh, s8 uh, computer science students who is working as an intern uh, with us in ui Uh, area so what is ui uh, there is ux also and there is like i mentioned front end development also uh, there is a screen uh, here a screenshot which you can see obviously an apple uh, screen and you can see two uh, boxes here of different sizes and finally a submit button in red so the code behind that is done by the front end developer that is when you click the submit button a code has to be triggered and it has to hit the apis and then it has to invoke go to the server and return back and that code is uh, written that is a blue that is a, done by the front end developer it is usually written in angular or react or vue or javascript plain javascript and uh, the design of this screen it could be a web screen it could be a mobile screen yeah for the application the design of the screen is what is done by the ui developer or the ui designer now how should uh, the text box be where should it be placed what is the font to be used what is the color scheme to be used is done by the user interface uh, designer or the developer he will need to have skills in html in css a little bit of javascript and also artistic sense also because he will need to work on uh, the tools like photoshop and illustrator to design the screens and the wireframes ux person is a much more senior person who will interact with the clients who will know the psychology of the clients and who will have you know, uh, write the user stories you know what is the end user want now, what is the psychology how do i go from one screen to another screen what is the uh, flow of the screens that are there what is the persona of the user and based on the persona of the user how do i design the user stories that is what the ux person uh, does he uh, the us per, ux person usually profile will be a senior person who has experience in uh, interacting with clients and knowing the clients needs uh, and uh, he will have a bit of business sense also to understand uh, the uh, user needs but as a fresher user interface uh, design is something you can get to do if you have artistic skills and you have you know done something in college when it comes to designing uh, you know web pages designing posters uh, but a lot of things to learn when it comes to ui design but if you are uh, passionate about design this is one area you can get into difference between ux and ui uh, you know ui is about uh, the layout visual design and branding uh, but uh, at the same time ux as i mentioned is more of a senior uh, person job he does the user research the user stories personas usability testing and gives the wireframes Uh, to the ui person and the ui person wireframes are like skeletons skeleton screens uh, which is uh, again uh, done by the ui person but uh, the ux person uh, understands the user needs and communicates the wireframes finally implemented by the ui designer right before i move on to the next one any questions okay i'll move on to the uh, next uh, job next job is that of uh, uh, stet or the software development engineer uh, in testing you know, testing as you know is one of the uh, phases in software development and if you see a company uh, if you take 100 people there might be around uh, uh, if you take developers as 60 people there might be around 20 to 30 testers 
you know, 20 to 25 testers to test the application. The testers will be uh, part of every uh, project also. So what is software development engineer uh, in, in test? So a software development engineer, earlier testing used to be manual. You know, a tester needs to know uh, testing methodologies and you need to sit down and test each of these uh, uh, screens. But a software development engineer in test is uh, somebody who knows how to write uh, scripts to automate the testing process. So this person will understand the requirements from the uh, business user, then uh, uh, interface with the developers who are developing the code, understand the system that they're building, and finally write scripts to automate the testing process. So he needs to have certain uh, skill set uh, and uh, technical uh, skill set are the agile and DevOps mindset, design and coding skills. He needs to uh, understand the testing methodologies and understanding of behavior driven and development. So uh, if you want to, if you aspire to get into uh, a more advanced job, this is something that is available in the testing area. Usually, uh, uh, the big companies uh, take freshers from campus, train them to be testers, to be manual testers, and uh, put them into testing. After some time, they learn to be automated testers also. But before uh, you know, you join the industry itself. If you can develop uh, these skills and do some courses, online courses in STET, you know, you will have a head start over uh, others when it comes to. Uh, the testing space, if you want to get into the testing space. Any questions? Okay, I'll move on to the next one. CR, that is another uh, area, customer relationship management. Uh, I've uh, again listed certain uh, software which are used throughout the world CRM software, which are very popular and used throughout the world. CRM is a software that helps businesses foster strong customer relationship and to improve sales and retention by having quality conversations with prospects and customers. You know, this is basically about, these are tools that are used in the sales area. Basically the sales area uh, to track and monitor uh, the customers, uh, interact with potential customers, uh, prospects, you know, all these things. It is a big area and there are lots of jobs uh, in these areas and Salesforce is the leader in this and different companies have their own Salesforce divisions. We at INAB use HubSpot and Sugar CRM. We have analysts working on HubSpot and Sugar CRM and uh, bigger companies will have either Salesforce or SAP or Microsoft or Oracle. You know, Soho is an Indian company that is a leader, uh, one of the leaders in this particular area. Uh, if you want to get into a more advanced job, you know, in a different kind of career uh, with uh, uh, you know skills needed uh, for sales, and uh, uh, Salesforce and SAP, Oracle and Microsoft Dynamics will be uh, the area, the tools that you need to learn. Slightly, I would say, not slightly, but uh, uh, if you want to take certifications, it is expensive. I wouldn't say slightly expensive, but it is expensive, and. Uh, you will have to join an institute and uh, uh, which is licensed uh, and then learn this and get certifications in these areas to get uh, entry as a fresher into uh, this particular area. Any questions? Okay. Finally, uh, digital uh, marketing. Uh, digital marketing is something that has uh, that has been coming up over the years because uh, any product or any service that you have earlier people uh, used to go to a client site you know you had people coming to offices and you know like pharma companies you go to the doctor's office and uh, you sell products now we don't have uh, people doing that uh, one second Okay, sorry. <laughs> so uh, the final one is uh, digital uh, marketing. 
where uh, you know over the years over the past 10 years any product or service that you have uh, is sold through digital uh, media digital media could be uh, you know you could use sms you could use email you can use uh, different uh, uh, social media handles like facebook like google instagram twitter linkedin lot of things are there a lot of uh, media are there a lot of avenues are there to reach your customer uh, personally you know you can get to his mobile phone directly right or whatever he sees you can get to him directly so this is an area where there are a lot of requirements and uh, i've seen a good number of freshers getting into this area uh, many people might say uh, this does not require engineering skills but i would say this does require engineering skills because uh, uh, ai and machine learning uh, aspects are also involved this also involves uh, generating content uh, to get to the uh, customer developing the brand you know uh, research on uh, other uh, market uh, players that are there with similar products and uh, search engine search engine optimization uh, analyzing the data and also uh, again fine tuning your product uh, marketing uh, strategy and the contents related to that finally machine and ai machine learning and ai also used to again uh, generate in, generate insights into how you can do this uh, well so this is something that i have seen over the past few years a lot of freshers getting into and becoming successful as a digital marketer some having their own companies running their own companies for digital marketing right any questions okay that was my last slide uh, the different eight different uh, advanced jobs into which uh, freshers can freshers beta freshers can getting if you have any queries you can uh, contact me my email my phone number and also my linkedin uh, profile is also there you can connect with me on linkedin if you have any queries you can contact me on phone or on uh, email i'll be very happy to answer your questions any questions right now i can uh, wait for a couple of minutes uh, i'm very much sure that each and everyone here gained significantly from the talk now it's time to fill any gaps please use this opportunity for clearing your queries and doubts ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ചോദിക്കാൻ മടിയുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ മലയാളത്തിലും ചോദിക്കാം anything you would like to know about uh, you know the different types of jobs or even about inapp uh, or technopark anything okay thanks akash yeah hi sir um neeraj here so uh, a quick question um, you were mentioning about uh, you know uh, most of the companies following agile framework uh, maybe scrum or kanban whatever. so uh, from from your perspective um, from the customer perspective maybe um, it is uh, you know it is delivering uh, you know timely products and uh, it is uh, giving more throughput but uh, what is the uh, you know view from a developer or a um, person as a, a normal resource who's working on the project how is the uh, strain or the pressure on him when uh, you are working in an agile uh, you know environment okay uh, let me tell you the evolution of agile uh, initially what was there was the waterfall model where uh, development used to go from you know gathering the requirements sequential you know one gets finished and then it's on to the other Uh, gathering the requirements design of the application then the coding then the testing then the deployment then the maintenance 
then if there is anything uh, else to be done it might come back and start the waterfall model so this was uh, what was done earlier but over the years what has happened over is the requirements never get uh, finalized right if you go to uh, a client uh, especially if you are developing a product or you are developing a service for uh, that is solving a problem for a client and the client's uh, requirements uh, never uh, finishes so what you need is an agile uh, development where you do initially a minimum viable product or a minimum uh, service show it to the client take his feedback and then start uh, development you know it goes into more uh, iterative more iterations will be there and uh, uh, mainly the feedback that comes from the client is incorporated into the development so finally the client gets what they want now you might have seen pictures where uh, the client wants uh, an elephant and finally what is delivered is a donkey now that doesn't happen in agile model because at every iteration the feedback of the client is taken and the development is so flexible that it can mold itself to the client's needs so what is important uh, uh, as you rightly mentioned is finally the client gets what he wants now looking at the developer perspective now the person inside the development uh, when it comes to uh, agile development what is, what is there is certain sprints right you start sprint 1 you finish sprint 1 uh, take the feedback then you start sprint 2 then you take the feedback then sprint 3 it goes like that the work goes like that so it is defined now what is to be done inside each sprint is clearly defined and therefore there is clarity for every developer on what needs to be done and how much is the timeline so project management is something that comes in on top of this and the good project managers what they do they make sure that the sprints are correct so that it is not a strain on the developers right so what is critical in agile development is project management clear we got it uh, thank you and uh, that, is, that is that is why the project managers are very critical uh, they are key resources when it comes to uh, making sure that uh, the sprints are correct the, the delivery uh, is proper at the same time there is not much strain on the developers also yeah it's clear sir thank you thank you for the input where are you any other questions okay so sona has asked could you mention some good certification courses in data science so uh, as i mentioned uh, data science uh, there are different uh, roles so data scientist is there data analyst is there a data engineer is there ml engineer is there of course data scientist uh, uh, if you want to be if you are really serious about going into data science i will encourage you to go for an mtech degree in data science and as far as possible get into the best in institutes in india or you can go outside uh, european countries uh, germany uh, uk uh, france or the us or canada for an advanced uh, postgraduate uh, uh, degree in data science if you are really serious about getting into this role now if that is not feasible right now that if you don't uh, uh you know want to go for an mtech or an ms degree then the next step is getting into the role of a data engineer or an ml engineer or a data analyst if you want to be a data analyst get certification in uh, tools uh, you know you can search in coursera or edx for uh, bi tools business intelligence tools or if you want to be a data engineer uh, you can uh, uh, search for apache spark if it is open source the then uh, you can even inside aws there are lots of services that are there but basically uh, data science uh, requires machine learning also so you need to be clear on your machine learning skills which includes 
programming in Python in uh, two main libraries which deals with data, uh, Pandas and also NumPy. You have to be very clear uh, on how to use these two uh, libraries when dealing with data, cleaning the data, you know, manipulating, processing the data, you know, two of these libraries. So uh, it is not just doing courses, it is also about doing uh, projects too, uh, you know, sample projects, uh, proof of concept uh, applications uh, to get yourself ready uh, for the industry. But my first recommendation is if you are really serious about data science, uh, go and get a, a master's degree. Hello, sir. Yeah, Kiran. <coughs> yeah, so I just want to know how uh, in, in app or any similar companies, how do they take up a project and how this work is all getting split up because there are so many job roles right in a company. So just out of a curiosity, I want to know how that works. Okay, uh, so how do we uh, get uh, projects? Uh, we have uh, sales happening in our client locations. For us in app, the client location is the US. So we have uh, sales people there in the US uh, who uh, contact uh, clients. Uh, how do uh, they get contacts? It is through website, through digital marketing. We have a digital marketing team uh, which uh, does uh, marketing through email campaigns, uh, through our website, through other different websites, and they get uh, links and uh, the salespeople contact uh, uh, these customers and uh, present our skills. And once the client is uh, convinced that we are the right people for the job, we sign uh, a project, you know, we sign an agreement with them that we will develop uh, uh, this solution for you. We are a services company. So uh, we'll provide this service for you. That is, we'll solve this problem for you. We will use this, this technology. Uh, in InApp, we have a variety of technologies and depending upon uh, which is the right technology, we'll choose that. We have Microsoft technologies, we have uh, Java, we have PHP, we have Python, we have JavaScript, uh, we have Unity, uh, you know, uh, we have all these technologies. We have, again, cloud-related solutions. So and after analyzing the problem that the client has, we present to the client that we'll solve this using this particular technology. And once we sign the agreement, there's a timeline also defined in that. Uh, once the uh, uh, agreement is signed, a team is put into place. You know, uh, A team lead will be there. A project manager will be there. Under the team lead, there will be different people, uh, developers that are, and then there'll be uh, sometimes full stack developers, there'll be front end developers, there'll be back end developers, there'll be DevOps people, there'll be UI people, there'll be testers. You know, it will be a combination of all these uh, people that will make the team. So once the team starts working, the project manager again defines the sprints, you know, sprint number one, sprint number two, and each and every uh, uh, interaction with the client, it goes into the sprints. And finally, at the end of the project, this particular service is finally deployed and it starts working for the uh, client. In between the sprints also, feedback from the clients are also uh, taken. Now, another role that is there is that of a business analyst. A business analyst also comes uh, into the project uh, uh, and uh, uh, documents and analyzes the business needs of the uh, client and then communicates to uh, the team. Sometimes the business uh, analyst might need to go into the client site also to analyze the client systems and understand what is the problem uh, and then give it to the team to design the solution. Right? So uh, the team will be made up of all these people and uh, uh, depending upon the uh, size of the project, there will be many uh, front-end developers, there might be many back-end developers, there might be many full-stack developers, there will be several testers, there will be maybe one or two business analysts, there'll be one project manager, there might be a technical lead, uh, there'll be testers, there'll be DevOps people. You know, all this uh, constitute a team. Kiran, uh, does this answer your question? Yes, sir. Got a slight idea regarding it. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Uh, 
ഹലോ സാർ ഹലോ സാർ ജസ്റ്റ് വൺ മോർ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇപ്പം ഒരു പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ പ്രൊഡക്റ്റ് ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ അത് എന്തായാലും ആ ഒരു ക്ലയന്റിനെ പിച്ച് ചെയ്യലോ കമ്പനി മേ ബി സംതിങ് കോൾ എസ് സെയിൽസ് എഞ്ചിനീയർ ഒരു ടെക്നിക്കൽ സെയിൽസ് അങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ഉണ്ടാവില്ലേ ഉണ്ട് 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 ഓക്കെ സോ എവറി കമ്പനി വിൽ ഹാവ് എ സെയിൽസ് യു നോ രണ്ടും ഉണ്ട് മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് ഉണ്ട് സെയിൽസും ഉണ്ട് മാർക്കറ്റിംഗും ഡിഫറെന്റ് ആണ് സെയിൽസും ഡിഫറെന്റ് ആണ് മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് വിൽ കോൺസെൻട്രേറ്റ് ഓൺ ജനറേറ്റിംഗ് യു നോ മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് കണ്ടന്റ് ആൻഡ് ദേ വിൽ സ്പ്രെഡ് ഇറ്റ് സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഹിറ്റ്സ് ദ ഡിഫറെന്റ് ക്ലയൻസ് അപ്പൊ അതിനകത്ത് മാർക്കറ്റിംഗിനകത്ത് ഒരുപാട് റിസർച്ച് ഒക്കെ നടത്താറുണ്ട് യുനോ മാർക്കറ്റ് റിസർച്ച് നടത്തണം ഹൗ ടു ടാർഗറ്റ് ദ ക്ലയൻസ് ഇതെല്ലാം മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് ടീം ചെയ്യണം പിന്നെ ഈ കണ്ടന്റ് ജനറേറ്റ് ചെയ്യണമല്ലോ മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് ആവശ്യമുള്ള പോസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് കേസ് സ്റ്റഡീസ് വൈറ്റ് പേപ്പേഴ്സ് പിന്നെ അതുപോലെ തന്നെ ഫ്ലയേഴ്സ് ഇതെല്ലാം ജനറേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് ടീം ആണ് നാ അതിന്റെ കൂട്ടത്തിലാണ് വർക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്നത് സെയിൽസ് പീപ്പിൾ ഉണ്ട് അതാണ് ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞത് അവർ സെയിൽസ് പീപ്പിൾ ആർ മെയിൻലി അറ്റ് ദ ക്ലയൻസ് സൈറ്റ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് ഇൻ ദ യു എസ് ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് അപ്പൊ ഈ സെയിൽസ് പീപ്പിൾ what they do is uh, once the marketing uh, goes out uh, some clients uh, will respond you know can i understand more about uh, your company more about your product uh, more about your services nu parnu varumbodhekum the marketing team in adu adu sales il ottu then sales people will handle that conversation with the uh, clients and it is their uh, skill uh, to convince the clients that we have uh the necessary capability to solve their problem or uh, we have the product for their business needs and all that is sales in the uh, function aanu so uh, sometimes it takes uh, uh, one month sometimes it takes six months to close a deal uh, it is not easy uh, it requires a lot of skill uh, to close a deal with uh, you know something like a us company or a big uh, fortune 500 company it takes uh, several months sometimes even uh, years together to close a deal adu pettanu varthilla but some things close very fast uh, which is very rare but uh, it requires a lot of skill uh, to understand the client and to sell uh, the services or the product that we have and it, at inap we have people there uh, in the us itself who does the selling kiran yes sir thank you okay. where and again i'll be happy to answer anything that you have even outside uh, uh, this uh, webinar also uh, i have shown you my last slide and uh, shown you my mail mail phone number linkedin you can connect on any of these uh, three and uh, i'll be very happy to answer your questions uh, later also okay that's it uh, that's it from my side thank you we were literally glued to the screen and dear shark uh, thank you for the right orientation sir uh, i triple and the student community would be behind you pestering for more talks um, we have a small memento deep from our hearts uh, jacob ah uh, neeraj could you please make me as a co-host hope you liked it sir thank you i was just saying how to unmute myself thank you thank you thank you so much sir please do send it uh, please do send it to my uh, email id sure sir sure sir thank you thank you thank you everyone have a good night good night